My name is Marcus Mitchell, and this is Africa Chef. <laughs> Welcome to Africa Chef. My name is Marcus Mitchell. Today we're barbecuing. Um, a festival of fire and love. We've got ostrich on the barbecue, char-grilled smoked ostrich. Uh, we've got skewers that we're going to do for our vegetarian brothers and sisters, halloumi and pepper skewers, uh, basted with a sweet chili ginger jam and marinated in tzatziki sauce. So, let's get started. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put out some prawn nachos. Keep everyone's mouths busy, keep everyone entertained while I can spend some time enjoying the braai flace. I had a, uh, a little bit of a tortilla party last night. We had some wraps, um, some chapatis, some parathas, some arotis, some flatbreads. Um, generally the next day, uh, they're, they're pretty hard to roll. They get a little bit crusty. So what I do is uh, cut them up, bake them, put some olive oil, and then use them as nachos. Very, very simple thing to do. Cut up nachos or tortillas from the previous day. I'm going to let, lay them out here like this. Um, I got my oven nice and hot. Um, and I'm just going to spray these things with some olive oil or normal oil. It's not going to kill you to have some corn oil in your life, you know. I don't know. These cooking programs tend to be addicted to olive oil. Then an insanely hot pan just before smoking temperature. Doesn't make a lot of sense, but it's sort of beginning to smoke now. Got some oil in my pan. Again, it's smoking. It's dangerously hot. Now I want to do some uh, chili prawns. Uh, so I've got my onions in there. What I normally do, save yourself a lot of time, just blend ginger and garlic together and just keep that in the fridge in a huge pot. Again, put a little bit of vinegar, a little bit of oil just to preserve it up. And then for anything spicy, whether you're doing spicy uh, Singapore prawns, whether even you're doing Mexican food or uh, Indian food, always you have the holy trinity of spices, which is going to be your onions, your ginger, your garlic, and your chilies. Now, hang on, that's four things, isn't it? Um, the four horsemen of the spice world. So again, first of all, it's onions. Secondly, ginger. Thirdly, chilies. Fourthly, garlic, because generally, it burns. Uh, so when it is sizzling and popping and shouting and screaming, and that's what cooking is all about, really. If you ever go into a Chinese restaurant, if you ever go into an Indian restaurant, it's always got this high power, this sort of roar, this cacophony, this, this rocket propulsion. So never be afraid of heat when you're cooking. You know, uh, when you are cooking, everything should have that beautiful sort of caramelized char uh, around it. Well, not everything, but you know, in, in general, really. Uh, so I've got these prawns. These prawns are from a, a fisherman. Uh, I'd love to say I collected them at moonlight on a, on a Lamu Dao just off the east coast of Mombasa, but that's not the fact, actually. They're just prawns from a supermarket freezer. So again, you're putting them in the pan. You want to hear a sizzle, a shout, a wahey, a little bit of woomph, a little bit of la di da, a little bit of shoo shoo shoo, a little bit of woof and bark. Let me just check on my nachos. They're going to cook quite quickly. Beautiful, golden brown. First things first, going to put those on my plate. Uh, now, uh, cooking prawns, cooking seafood is really an art form. Uh, cooking chicken breast is an art form. Cooking things on the bone is, uh, is not so difficult. You can generally boil them, braise them, fry them, fry them, barbecue them for, for, to your heart's content, actually. Um, otherwise, these prawns are not going to take more than uh, five minutes to cook. What I would like to serve with these prawns while they are cooking um, because what's nachos without a gratuitous dollop of something creamy? Uh, it's, it's all about textures, nachos, isn't it? You've, you've got something sort of crispy. You've got the cream cheese, which is soft. You've got the spring onions on top, which is sort of crunchy. You've got the cheese, which is soft. You've got the prawns, which are spicy and gingery. You've got the, uh, um, the sort of sour cream with, or the guacamole, which is cooling and soothing. 
So, uh, you know, when you're doing nachos, it really is a real celebration of, of contrasting flavors and textures. And that's really what you've got to get across. I've got some yogurt, and I've hung it in this muslin cloth here. And what's that going to do is just sort of uh, drip away the whey, leaving you with a nice, unctuously thick, sexy yogurt. The, the, the Lebanese would call this a labna. Um, you could add some garlic and some cucumber to it. You've got uh, tzatziki. Um, you could add some sort of burnt, smoked aubergines, and you've got a sort of baba ganoushy sort of uh, effect happening there. Um, right, what's nachos without a little bit of cheese? So I'm just going to put the cheese on top of the prawns here. Um, I've got a few uh, chives there. We're going to mix up. Don't forget salt, massively important. Makes the whole difference to a meal. Salt and pepper. Now I'm just going to pour these. On the top, thusly, I'm just going to scatter some uh, chives, or you can do spring onions. Obviously, that's going to give you a nice, uh, sexy crunch to it. Get some nice, gratuitous uh, dollops of elabna cheese or yogurt. Um, an important uh, factor of cooking is so I've got all these crispy bits in the pan. I've got all this tucker tucker that's stuck to the side. All this detritus. This this flavorsome effluvium that I'm going to just scrape off. That's going to add an even nicer little crunch to the prawns. We're cooking ostrich. Right, we've uh, sent out the uh, prawns. Everyone's happy. Everyone's mouths are keeping uh, busy. Um, now for to take care of our vegetarian brothers and sisters and love them or hate them they're sort of here to stay as long as a pure vegetarian I've got nothing, nothing much against pure vegetarians but don't give me that sort of lipstick vegetarian the, the sort of um, I don't wish to be seen eating meat but I actually you know eat it on the sly you know like I'll have a bit of fish I'll have a bit of prawn I'll have a bit of tuna you know that hasn't killed a dolphin less of my soapbox more onto the paneer and pepper skewers. All right. I'm going to use half of this. So you use, I, I, well, I used a quarter of it for the uh, prawns. I'm going to use another sort of big dollop for these skewers. What milk or what cream or what yogurt does on a barbecue is sort of burn nicely, caramelize. It can soften meat as well, and it can flavor meat because it's always got that sort of lemony uh, tartness quality uh, to yogurt, to milk, to cream, to tzatziki. Next, I'm going to throw in a little bit of spices. I've got some celery salt. Celery salt's really nice. In fact, it's one of the ingredients to Chesapeake Old Bay seasoning. Uh, in fact, it's a major constituent of that. And it's got this sort of quality that makes you salivate, you know. Uh, let me run through this. I've got some mustard powder. Um, I've got some celery salt. Um, Spanish paprika is always nice. Adds a nice color. And you can't really put too much of it. Also, another major constituent in Cajun spice. Uh, a little bit of cayenne pepper. I don't know. I'm just sort of scrounging around my spice cupboard. Looking for something a little bit sexy. Yeah, fennel could do, fennel could do. Just put some oil, and I'm just going to put this in uh, marination. Don't really have to marinate it for so long. Um, but you do want to get all that yogurt, get all that flavoring. And of course, salt and pepper. At the restaurant, we always instill upon the trainee chefs that salt and pepper are a chef's brother and sister, forever by your side, forever. And it makes a complete difference to any meal. You can spend hours and days cooking and roasting and braising and frying and smoking. If you don't add salt at the end, it's a complete waste of time. All right, so just please remember that. Fantastic. I've got these... Uh, Wonderfully, dramatically huge uh, tandoor skewers. Uh, so alternating between red peppers, paneer, yellow peppers, green peppers. And what I will serve with this 
is um, a sort of a sweet and sour sauce, sort of like chili based. And get these big dramatic skewers, you know? I mean, you don't want these piddly little um, oversized toothpicks. You know, on, on, on your buffet, on your barbecue, you want drama. So that's what I'm talking here. And even the vegetarians need a little bit of drama. So nice big fat skewers are gonna grace um, our table. And it's, it's highly impractical, but it's, you know, it's damn sexy. And so I'm gonna add a little bit more salt and a little bit more pepper. Because, you know, how many times have you been to a restaurant and the food's been too salty? Not a lot, is it? So it's quite hard to over-season, but a lot of times you've had under-seasoned food, so don't be shy. Um, I'm just gonna hang these up over here. Uh, if, if you have a barbecue, you can, you can hang them from a tree. Um, again, it's, it's, it's all about drama and about a bit of fun and about causing a little bit of a stir. And obviously, salt. And from my King Lear. <laughs> salt! <laughs> You're watching Africa Chef. What goes uh, really nice with halloumi, because it's fatty, it's cheesy, it's going to be slightly charred on the bar barbecue. Uh, we're going to have something a little bit sweet and a little bit tart to cut through it. And what could be better than a, a chili ginger jam or a chili ginger sauce that I'm going to uh, make here. Uh, first off, I've got a nice hot pan, of course. What's going to happen if, if your oil is cold and your pan is cold and you put in your meat or if you put in uh, onions, it's, the oil's going to go inside and it's going to make it soggy and tasteless. Um, as we said with the beginning, you know, you want, you want some drama, you want some heat, you want a, a bang, a fizz, a pop, um, a shout, a spark, a splatter. Um, fine, so we've got onions again. I'm going down this sort of onions, chili and garlic route, which I absolutely love. You know, Kenya has been infected with a, with a massive um, Indian uh, fusion to the, to the cuisine here. Um, so everyone sort of likes a little bit of chili. And the more you get used to chili, the more of the flavor you actually start picking up on it. Um, and one of my favorites is, uh, is this little puppy here. That's called a Scotch bonnet chili. And it's got a wonderful sort of floral uh, fragrance to it. And so if you do get used to chilies, you start picking up lovely flavors. Um, so onions, and then I've got my trusty uh, pale ginger steed, my ginger garlic mix. I've got vinegar here. I've got sugar here. A lot of wonderful sauces have come from um, a fine balance of vinegar and sugar. Uh, you talk about tomato, ketchup, a vinegar and sugar, your sweet and sour, barbecue sauce, a Branston pickle, a pickle lily. Um, they start off sort of as preservation methods, uh, sugar and vinegar, but slowly so, sort of detriment in, into wonderful, flavorsome sauces. And the trick is there's no real way of telling the uh, balance between vinegar and sugar only through taste. Um, so keep on tasting it, adding vinegar, adding sugar. I'm making a jam here. So what I'm thinking when I do make these sauces, I do get this sort of perverse pleasure. I don't know what it is. Everyone's got their own little sort of ditty. And mine is sort of managing to uh, clean out my larder or clean out my fridge. So I've just got a, a bit of uh, Heinz ketchup that's never ever going to see the light of day again. I've got uh, this jam that my grandmother got me for Christmas back in the late 70s. I'm going to sort of finish that off in there. So again, uh, that's, this is called a, a Tamarillo jam. Um, I could use the end of my HP bottle. Um, I don't think I could use anything like uh, mayonnaise because that's going to split. Certainly, big fat squeeze of lemon. Um, Roll the lemon thusly for, uh, for a couple of seconds and you shall obtain maximum juice 
extraction. It all gets thrown in here, really. Um, and uh, as I said, I, I just get one of those little kicks out of cleaning out my fridge. I don't hurt anyone with my little fetish, you know? No one's hurt at all. So, uh, you know, don't judge me, okay? And now it's sort of reducing into quite a nice, uh, thick uh, jam. I'm just gonna hive that off into a suitable container. Remember, get all the nasty scrapings around the edge. That's where all the flavor goes to. So there, I have my chili ginger jam that's gonna go with my skewers. I always take a couple of lemons to the barbecue. Always, 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 because everything deserves a squeeze of lemon. Whether it's a chicken breast, whether it's a pork, whether it's a fish, whether it's a beef even, uh, everything loves a squeeze of lemon. Then I've also got my ostrich. Um, this is this fillet of ostrich. This is marinated in a little bit of red wine and a little bit of mustard. Just one other essential barbecue component. Boom! It's bright time. We're cooking ostrich. Welcome to my humble barbecue, my uh, altar of meat and beer and sacrifice. First things first, let's clean the barbecue. I always uh, use newspaper and uh, a little bit of oil on the newspaper. And then I'm just gonna rub that onto the um, grills. And also what that's gonna do is gonna, gonna release a little bit of flame from the coals. And the flames is gonna go, come up and really make this really red hot. Um, and as a, a rule of thumb, to test how hot your barbecue should be, um, you want to leave your hands there and yeah, it should be like three or four seconds you can put your hand there and that should be perfect. That is your, your realm of temperature. Um, so I'm going to do the ostrich fillet. Uh, just to recap, ostrich fillet, it's a wonderfully lean bit of um, beef type uh, meats. It's nothing to do with poultry whatsoever. Uh, it became very popular in England uh, and Europe when Mad Cow's disease was, was taking over the place. Um, and people were looking for an alternate sort of red meat that they could depend upon. And thus, ostrich became a very popular meat. And I think it's wonderful. I think it's just the Rolls Royce of, 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 of meat, to be honest. It's lean, it's uh, very low in cholesterol, it's very high in protein. It, it's, it has no fat, but it has a lot of juice somehow. I'm not quite sure what that is. Anyway, let's stop gossiping about it. And let's gooi it on the bra, as my uh, South African cousins will say, or chack it on the babby, as the Australians would say. Now, what I'm going to do here, um, I'm just going to put, and you can do the same exactly with beef fillet as well. You can put it directly onto the coals. And that's what I'm going to do here. And uh, I remember when I first saw this, it was uh, a guy having a barbecue in Uganda. And uh, as soon as he did this, uh, you know, obviously around the barbecue, there was much, you know, wailing and gnashing of teeth and guffawing and how could yous. Um, and he said unto us, he said, oh ye of little faith. And surely enough, 20 minutes later, put it on the slab, gave it some slices, Jizzle of oil, a little bit of mold and sea salt, and it was the most awesome meat I've ever had in my life. So the ostrich fillet is sitting on the uh, directly on the charcoals here, and I'm going to put these on top of the grill. A little bit of oil. What I am going to do, I'm going to serve this on a beautiful bed of homegrown spinach, Swiss chard, and lettuce, and rocket leaves, and basil. So right now, I'm just going to while this is cooking, and this will take. A, re a good 15 minutes uh, for the, the ostrich fillet and for the skewers, 15, 20 minutes uh, to get a sort of medium on the beef, uh, a medium well on, on, on the halloumi skewers. All right, so let's dart off into the garden. Come on. Right, welcome to my herb garden. Uh, 
I'm going to grab some tarragon here. Don't worry about tarragon must go with chicken. Tarragon must go with this. Parsley must go with this. Thai must go with lamb. It's all nonsense really. If you have lovely garden fresh vegetables, everything's going to go well with each other. Fantastic. I've got some Swiss chard here. Got some rhubarb growing over there. This is uh, this is normal spinach. Um, very possible to eat it raw. Don't really have to cook it at all. It's fantastic clean salad. It's got a wonderful texture. Come on, what are you trying? Oh dear, our basil's seen better days. Um, this is uh, sage, fennel. I'm just going to get some some leaves off there. That's going to add a nice sort of um, peppery depth. This is aloe vera. Cleopatra used to treat her soldiers' wounds with it. Check, it's a wonderful thing because God designed it in a sort of toothpaste tube. You see, just ready to apply. It's amazing. I'm just going to grab some nice bean leaves here. And remember kids, you can basically eat anything in your garden. Like grass, conifers, rabbits, snails, gravel, bats. Stay tuned for more Africa Chef. Fantastic, I've done a little bit of rummaging and foraging. Which is great, isn't it? There's this wonderful sort of prehensile attitude to this sort of cooking. You know, it's where we all met originally, back in the caves while we were grunting and dragging women around by their hair. All right, I'm just gonna flip her now. Boing. Okay, skewers are done. That must be about 17, 18 minutes, bordering on 20 minutes. Um, for something, especially the ostrich fillet that's right on the charcoal, that's uh, it's quite a long time, you can imagine. I'm going to put this on. Obviously, I have to get the soot off. It's very simple. Just get a, a fork like this, stick it in there, and I'm going to squeeze, and I'm going to rub. Squeeze, and rub. And again, don't forget, there'll still be some skeptical crit uh, critics around you. And they're going, oh, all right, let's see this. Let's see what happens. And uh, I've had this quite a few times. Squeeze and scrape, squeeze and scrape. So that's on there like that. I'm gonna cut some slices. Okay, uh, geez, how, how do you know if uh, ostrich fillet is cooked? Um, how do you know if a beef fillet is cooked? Um, it's, it is down to a lot of experience, um, but the best way is generally feel. Um, there is an old trick. If I put my finger like this, and I feel this, well, that feels rare. Right, if I do this to the second finger, that's meant to be medium. Okay, slightly soft, slightly hard. If you go here, that's meant to be well done. I can feel it's quite hard. So, I mean, we, we, it's just really experience and, and trying and brying and barbecuing as much as possible. But that's, that's a little trick that we tell all the trainees. This is all the, uh, all the mixed lettuce leaves and the mixed, there's mixed herbs in there. There's um, these lovely uh, fronds of fennel. Um, there's these lovely sticks of tarragon, the two skewers either side. I'm just going to put them like this, sort of lay them down like full and dominoes as you uh, lay it down like that. So, and then I've got this beautiful um, ostrich fillet and that's been um, sort of resting. You can see the sort of blood coming out of it. If you're going to serve a steak or ostrich, um, on a, a plate and you don't let it rest just for a couple of minutes, um, what's happening is the blood is going to come all, out, all over the plate. So normally at a, at a sexy restaurant, they'll let it, um, 
I'll just let it rest. If you remember as well, our little chutney here that we're going to serve with the halloumi. It's a little bit thick, so I'm just going to nice big squeeze of lemon in it is going to thin it out or you can have some beer and I'm just gonna dress my halloumi with that a man's best friend salt a slash of olive oil I don't know maybe a sparkle of chilies a scintilla of lemon, a thrash of a cloth just to clean the sides, a dollop of uh, this is the same um, yogurt that we squeezed the whey out of and what I've done I've put some horseradish and a little bit of garlic just as a sort of dipping sauce and when we talk about giving people something special when we feel like putting our hearts um, on a chopping board when we want to treat our friends when we want to bring our families back together again well, there's nothing better than a barbecue food and love and celebration it's a wrap <laughs> yay